Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, March 3rd Town Council regular meeting. Madam Clerk. Okay, so those present, Councilors Granitowski, Bordelon, Bumgarter, Franco, Melendez, Parker, and Zapiri. So absent are Heed and Obrey. Seven is your count. So seven. we are at seven. Thank you. Um, we have with us this evening Troop 13 of the Connecticut Rivers Council, Mohegan District, Boy Scouts of America. And they will be presenting the colors and leading us in the pledge, please. So. Um, Mr. Scully, if you'd like to provide guidance for your troop. Attention will be on this stage live. Thank you, Mr. Scully and Troop 13G. We appreciate you coming out tonight to start off the meeting for us. Item three, recognitions, awards, and memorials. I don't believe we have any this evening. Uh, public hearings, there is no public hearing. So we are on to Roman numeral five, receipt of citizens' petitions, comments, and concerns. This is the portion of the council meeting where the council welcomes comments from citizens. To address the council, please sign the sheet on the table at the front of the meeting room. I have it here if anybody else wants to join. When you are recognized by the mayor, please approach the podium, clearly state your name and address, and speak into the microphone. Each presentation should be limited to five minutes or less, and citizens should, if possible, submit written comments. Presentations should be related to matters pertinent to Groton. Town councilors will only ask questions in order to clarify the speaker's presentation and can respond during the responses to citizens' petitions portion of the meeting. So this evening we have Allison Herschel followed by Richard Fitzgerald. Um, you will come to the podium um, after Ms. Herschel is completed with her remarks. Yes, please, into the microphone, that way they can catch it for the videographer. I'm Allison Herschel, um, and my address is 70 William Street, and I'm here tonight with my kids, Xavier and Amelia. <laughs> Um, so I'm here to um, just talk about the open space at what was formerly um, Knowing School. So we live right across the street, um, and that neighborhood didn't used to have a ton of kids, but it does now, and there are kids everywhere. There are at least four 10-year-old boys on between our street and the next street over, and then a bunch of other kids from kindergarten to like the younger elementary ages. Um, and they love that space. So they have a ton of energy because they're elementary age kids. Um, they go over there, they play football, they ride their bikes on the paved areas, um, they drive their RC cars, and then when it snows, they sled down the hill and they make snowmen. So I'm just here today, um, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous and I have notes, but I just, it's so important for them to have that open space. It's important to their physical health because they can run around, um, they get to use their imaginations because it's unstructured, it's just a big open space. They can do whatever they want to do, and it's not, um, 
it's not the same as, a, as an enclosed area that sometimes, you know, in the winter we go to like, there used to be stay and play, right? And that's a different feeling than a big wide open space and I think that's so important. So I'm here tonight because I know you guys vote on it and I know that you guys are the ones who will determine if it stays a big wide open space. Um, so I wanted to share that with you, let you know that there are a lot of kids who really value that space. And then also just real briefly, um, today they had to dress up at school uh, to reflect what they want to be when they grow up. So Xavier dressed as an off-road racer, which we can't really help him with at the space. But um, Amelia dressed as a farmer. She's missing her hat, it's been a long day. But um, she wants to be a farmer, she wants to grow food. It's really important to her, she really enjoys it, we enjoy doing it together. So that garden space over there is something that's just invaluable to that kind of experience. Um, I think sometimes people think that maybe kids aren't interested in, in growing food or learning about things like that, but they are. They just need the space um, and someone to teach them. So um, I will be over there and any kid in the neighborhood that wants to come over and learn. I think it just takes one or two kids um, setting an example and a, a mom and a dad being over there. Everyone will love it. Um, so I just encourage you guys to take what I've said tonight into consideration when you're voting in the future um, and know that it is really valuable to have that open space. Thank you. Is that it? Okay, thank you. Uh, Richard Fitzgerald, followed by Roseanne Katowski. Thank you for letting me speak. I have given you each a copy of my talk tonight uh, so you can follow along while I'm talking. A copy of my correspondence to the town council has also been given to you. The town manager is asking for you to approve signage for a non-accepted master plan. It is part of the it is part of the plan and could should be considered with it only. Uh, this should only be considered as part of the overall plan and voted on as a total plan. And uh, currently. 80% uh, of the uh, coastal access is inaccessible due to lack of signage and no, tres and no trespassing sign. This condition has been there for 15 to 20 years. I disagree with the new master plan as dated uh, February two, uh, 2000, uh, tw excuse me, uh, 2020 by uh, 40 to 50 percent. It is wrong. See my master, see the marked up copy I have given you on February 2020 and my input tonight. Only the condo owners can benefit from the blocking of the uh, Mystic Condo access, while the other 38,500 citizens and countless tourists cannot enjoy uh, this because of blockage of signage. It is a state paid for, state authorized, and state sanctioned uh, system. The, the project is very large and requires many records for ver uh, verification. The town only has a few records in the powerhouse and their active file. The po uh, powerhouse and the Fort Rachel Marina are in storage somewhere in planning. I suggest they look at the years 1987 through 1991 and also look at Mark Ophinger's records from the same period of time because it was his, his baby uh, for development. Under questioning, the town manager admitted he did not contact the state for any information. Uh, make them contact the Connecticut Department of Energy uh, Protection and do their job properly. This is a major source of uh, information. It should be noted that I contacted Heather Summers in February 2019 and subsequently two to three department heads. The conclusion of the conversation was the Fort Rachel Marina, the, the powerhouse, and the linkage should be included. Also. Uh, I talked to Mark Ofringer three times in a meeting and asked him direct question. Uh, did uh, what about the powerhouse? Uh, that was in a, uh, November 2016 and January 2017. He stated he took walking tours through the parking, uh, through the coastal, excuse me, I'm sorry, through the powerhouse. Uh, and coastal access signs were in place and there were no, no trespassing signs. Enclosed is also a way that Stonington handles the coastal access signage. Uh, this plan uh, is sent to, to the DEP for approval. The, they in turn send it back to the town. 
and then violations are sent out. Uh, example is included, and it is a very active system. Cotton, car, uh, Groton should uh, consider it. This, again, I repeat, the state is a, uh, this, this, uh, this coastal access is a state approved, state sanctioned, and state paid for public access. Congratulations to the town. In 2016, there were 13 missing signs and only two no trespassing signs. Today, there are nine missing signs, one in the wrong location, one, in, one misdirection, and three no trespassing signs. They all disappeared about 20 years ago. That's a gain of two in the last four years. The town attorney is very negative in his approach to the problem. One, the powerhouse was all negative. Uh, two, Fort Rachel Marina was 90 to 95% negative. Linkage uh, between the uh, Steamboat Wharf and the Mystic Art Center was completely ignored. In my, in my opinion, uh, this supports the town desire to eliminate uh, the powerhouse, Fort Rachel, and maybe even the passageway to, uh, from the Steamboat Wharf to uh, the Mystic Art Center. During the last six months, uh, from September to February, the attorney never attempted to contact uh, the state on any information. He should be made to do it. Reason for uh, in using it. Number one, the uh, Steamboat Wharf to Mystic Art Center. The parking lot is already public access and was used as Mystic Coastal Access from 1990 to uh, 2000 and was signed. It is part of the state uh, plan of, uh, of 1,090. Fort Rachel, uh, the, it is part of the plan of the 1990s. It is paid, it is paid for by the state. And it has a public road, a water street extension that, ex that goes from the entryway of the uh, marina to the railroad tracks and then down towards the water. Uh, the, it, the railroad tracks are protected uh, from this street by a, a large fence and therefore it is safe. The town cannot stop people from walking on the public road. The uh, Town Planning Commission did not have the authority in 1992, 1992 they did this, to you eliminate minute, walking sir? on a uh, coastal, uh, coastal access and uh, pay, uh, since it is paid for by the state. The, the powerhouse has three, currently three no trespassing signs. It is uh, there is a, uh, in the plan of 1990 and 1991, it, is, it states passage will be allowed from Mystic Art Museum to Randolph Wharf, and is also an active, uh, is active online today as an active system. Again, Mark, Mark Ofringer's remarks should be re, uh, taken into account. For years, passage has, was allowed through the pa uh, coastal, through the powerhouse. This passage is use and intent. Again, I repeat, use and intent. I believe that is a legal phrase that allows this to be continued. And when, when they applied for balconies and a powerhouse, uh, they, they uh, in, input it and in place this in a town committee. Mr. Included is the ma uh, marked up copy of the recreation department, uh, which is 60 to 80 percent wrong and I marked up where the linkage should be. Mr. I Fitzgerald? also included the paperwork for Excuse the town me, and the uh, town of Stonington. One sir? more thing, I disagree 40 to 50% with the uh, master plan as presented. One, Main Street and Water Street are included and not anywhere near the water and they are commerce, major commercial roads. Two, 60% of the report is a signage. Your time is up, sir. Excuse me. We have, we have your records, this, we have your um, complete that. statement for I the record, sir. I want to say sir. this one time and I apologize. If this is accepted, 60% of the coastal access in 1990 and 1991 uh, plan will be gone forever and it will be a great loss for the town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you leave a, co a set of this for the clerk? I left, uh, I left a, a copy for each of the uh, town councilors and the town clerk. Thank you very much. Then your complete remarks will be in the minutes for the meeting, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, I, I was so note that I'll, I'll uh, note the minutes or uh, the public record that Mr. Fitzgerald lives at 8 Benjamin Road. Thank you very much. Mystic. 
Uh, Roseanne Katowski followed by Larry Dunn. Roseanne Katowski, 24 Ann Avenue, Mystic, Connecticut, Groton RTM District 5. And tonight I have some budget comments for you. First of all, I would like to compliment the Town Council on the budget for the past two years. The 2019 tax increase was 2.4% without using fund balance, and the 2020 tax increase was zero, but used $1.3 million of fund balance. This averaged out to a 1.2% tax increase and a $650,000 use of fund balance each year, which I think is reasonable. Thank you. Hopefully we can have the same success for the next two years. There are, of course, pros and cons to using fund balance. The pro is to offset tax increases. The con is that it raises the budget for the next fiscal year. Since the auditors like to see 15% of the total budget in fund balance, anything over could be considered overtaxing. It would be ideal if it were possible to use excess fund balance without adding to the budget. One idea is to give the taxpayers rebates when the fund balance is above 15%. The most important way to control the 2021 budget is to keep the Board of Ed at minimum budget requirement. One reason is that the 2021 budget is already increasing due to debt service for the $184,500,000 school project. Second, it is important to remember that when the voters approved the project, they were promised savings when the school came online. The Board of Ed should be held to that promise because the voters made their decision to support the project based on Board of Ed information. Here are a few other ideas for you to consider for the 2021 budget. The nine employees who enjoyed a 10% raise in 2020 should have a zero raise this year, which averages their raise to 5% each year for two years, which is very generous compared to the raises that the taxpayers who are paying for the raises receive. Also, there should be some cost savings in the planning department due to consolidation of the Planning and Zoning Commission because there will be half the meetings, agendas, minutes, legal notices, etc. Last year, the town council and town manager made an effort to keep Groton taxpayer money in town, which I appreciate. There is no reason for the Groton taxpayers to be funding programs out of town regardless of how nice a program it may be. I believe that surrounding towns do not invest in their infrastructure because the residents use all our stuff. Groton has the third lowest median household income in Southwest Eastern Connecticut. So why are Groton taxpayers funding items enjoyed by residents of surrounding towns? Here are a few examples. While at Paquanic Plains Park, I have seen a Stonington Nursery School van unload 20 kids while Groton taxpayers are maintaining the park and the building. The federal summer food program is administered at the Groton Public Library, meaning our staff, facilities, and utilities. The Groton Public Library location is selected due to the demographic at Claude Chester, but I challenge you to find any Claude Chester kids at the library during the day. They're at the rec program. So who is enjoying the free breakfast and lunch? A friend told me that during a library visit, she chatted with a woman from Waterford who, with an SUV full of kids, was there to take advantage of the free stuff. One more example of Groton taxpayers supporting surrounding towns is the Monday and now Wednesday community dinners. You have one minute. If these dinners were for Groton residents only, I would not mention it. But people come from all over to enjoy a free meal. Even though the food is donated, the taxpayers are paying to maintain the facility and utilities. I would also like to see the town council streamline CIPs, eliminate consultant fees and lawyer fees as much as possible. One last item. As you all know, there is a paving company within the Public Works Department. It has been rumored for years that this may not be the most cost effective way to pave our roads. Recently, in response to an RTM Public Works paving referral, the town manager authorized CCM to research paving versus outsourcing. The RTM Public Works Committee will be discussing the referral this week. Hopefully, with the new director of Public Works and a town manager with experience from other geographic areas, the idea of in-house versus outsourced paving will be considered by the town council. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I'll give it to Betsy. 
I didn't hear you. I just wondered if I could give you guys the report, but I'll just give it to Betsy. Yes, that's great, and then it'll be in our minutes. Thank you very much. Larry Dunn? Thank you, Larry Dunn, 91 Crosswinds Drive. Uh, I'm here today <clears throat> as the chairman of the Conservation Commission, and I want to address the uh, item 2020-77, which is the uh, Mystic Coastal Access Plan. Uh, I, don't, I won't repeat all the details that uh, Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald did, but I do want to support or identify that uh, from a commission point of view. We fully support the effort to identify, protect, and publicize the Mystic Coastal Access Points in the town of Groton. I think the point to make, and I think that was made earlier, was the first priority we have in terms of protecting the rights of access for the town citizens by ensuring a legal review and making public the results of that review for the areas identified in the study. So it, that, to me, is the, the uh, critical aspect. The second aspect is the advertisement and the providing of signage. Uh, the proposal that was there is uh, interesting, but probably overdoes it. They have five and six foot signs on the, on the street. Uh, but I think the that signage proposal should be replaced with uh, uh, something more in keeping with, for example, the trail signage that the town has put up, uh, which is you know, relatively small and efficient and, uh, oh, by the way, lower cost. Uh, so uh, therefore, I would uh, request that we revisit, and I believe that is the case, the, the sizing of the signage that is being proposed. And that's it. Thank you very much. That's everyone who signed up. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak? OK, very good. We are on to the consent calendar, room numeral seven. Responses to citizens. Oh, I'm sorry. Roman numeral six. Responses to citizens' petitions. Does anyone have any comments or responses to citizens' petitions? Councilor Zapari. I, uh, I agree that the No Ink Garden should be preserved as open space. I just want, I think our speaker left. Yes. Oh, she had children. She OK. Uh, I think that we should preserve that as open space, and we should uh, uh, the, the gardens have been con continued to use, be used, I'm not sure to what extent at this point. I am disappointed by uh, the first speaker on coastal access. We have rules of allowing five minutes for each person presenting, and some people go on and on thinking that their presentation is more important than anyone else. That's not a democratic way to run business. We all live by the same rules and we should do it. I think when someone says, I apologize, and goes right on with the activity that he's apologizing for, he's indicating that he's not that truthful because the apology is contradicted by the behavior that continues. Councilor Zapari. Uh, great. Councilor I'm just Zapari. going on. Please don't uh, call into question the citizens' intentions. OK, but that's Thank just you. what we had to deal with. Um, and I mean, if people don't like my saying these things, they shouldn't vote for me. Uh, but I, I, I believe that we have to maintain a level of uh, honesty in this room, and we have to all be treated the same way and expect to be treated the same way. Um, uh, I think that the coastal access program is an excellent program and it, we, should, we should promote it insofar as we can. And I think that we should, <clears throat> we should publicize it. I think it's a great attraction to Mystic. Uh, tourists will come and they, they can get access to the river. It's a beautiful site and it opens to the public so that everyone can enjoy it. So that's my simple, simple uh, statement. I agree with the spirit, uh, with the, the facts. I just don't agree with the presentation or the actual rudeness to the, to the council in the way it was done. I would, I would again ask that the councilors please refrain from calling into question the motives and commenting on um, presentations by the public. Mr. Burt wanted to add something. I just, for the Wayne Gardens, I wanted to mention for the public's sake that it is gonna be on the agenda March 24th for that committee of the whole, so just so that everyone knows that. And Thank I you. have reached out to some of the No Ink leadership to let them know. So. Great. Thank you very much. We have Councilor Bordelon and Baumgartner. Um, first, I just wanted to thank all the speakers for coming out. I know um, 
I feel there's not enough time to speak. Uh, once a month is not enough, uh, considering the constituents of this town, the reason we're here is because of them. And I think having that open transparency to speak is important. So I feel that all your voices are very valid, despite what your opinion or, or my belief may be on those. With that being said, um, I, I appreciate um, the details uh, that uh, Representative Kutowski gave on the budget. Um, you do bring up some great valid points, and I appreciate you know um, you constantly advocating for um, your stance on the budget. Um, the in regards to um, Mr. Fitzgerald, I respectfully uh, appreciate everything you had to say. And once again, I do feel I wish you had more time to speak. It is hard to get everything out in five minutes once a month. Um, I also um, understand what you're speaking about, um, Larry, in regards to the signage sign and uh, everything. But once again, I do appreciate everybody and your comments were heard. Thank you. Councilor Baumgartner. Um, just a quick reminder to my colleagues. Um, before we assume any form of moral authority, I think we need to revisit whether or not we have previously shown uh, proper decorum in, in council meetings. Um, so before we're lecturing the public on how we conduct ourselves or uh, in, in public Senate meetings, and I'm not certainly not excusing um, you know, Mr. Fitzgerald going over the five minutes, but I think uh, it would behoove each and every one of us to um, reflect on what we have done to show proper decorum before calling anyone else out. So I would just like to state that for the record. Um, I'd like to thank the scouts for coming to this meeting. Um, I, uh, one thing I, I wish I always did was uh, be a scout, but um, I think we could probably talk about that during, uh, uh, I think I'm, we're, I'm a little bit out of line on the agenda. So, um, but nonetheless, um, just to respond to uh, citizens who provided public comment, thank you for coming tonight. Um, on the issue of the noise school property, um, I've continuously stated in my time on the council the importance of preserving the property for uh, recreation, uh, for open space. I know there are a lot of folks in town who believe that uh, the property could be um, best suited for development. Um, certainly it is a high value site, but in my eye, there is nothing more high value than providing um, residents the opportunity to uh, recreate and enjoy their open spaces. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, I think I align uh, with um, uh, Councilor Zapiri on that issue, and I think any opportunity we can take um, to revisit how we can um, further support that site as an open space, um, you know, should ought to be explored by the Council in the future. Um, on the issue of the Mr. Coastal Public Access, uh, again, I'd like to thank um, Mr. Fitzgerald for coming out and uh, providing testimony. Um, many of the points he made uh, tonight or several of the points he made in the last few meetings just about, again, uh, the importance of identifying whether or not certain access points um, were allowed uh, or um, certain access points um, or were a part of the, that were a part of the original um, plan uh, as adopted by the State Department of uh, Environment, uh, Environmental Protection um, continues to be a site that has actual coastal access. Uh, and I know we've had uh, a conversation last week with um, the town attorneys on that issue, but I think it's vitally important that uh, the town does have a conversation with uh, the, the state uh, as to clarifying what those access points are, um, aside from the documentation that the town attorneys reviewed. Um, Ms. Katowski, thank you for coming out. Um, any and all opportunities we can find to identify efficiencies in this town ought to be explored as well. Uh, and I look forward to working with you and uh, the rest of the RTM to effectuate uh, those changes. That is all, thank you. Any other counselors? Okay, seeing none, we are on to now, we're on to the consent calendar. So, Councilor Bumgardner, would you move the consent calendar, please? I shall. Thank you, sir. I will make a motion to approve the consent calendar that consists of items 2020-144, February 4, 2020 minutes, the 2020-145 special trust fund contributions, February, and the 2020-104-1 uh, various appointments and reappointments in February. So moved. Second. Moved by Bumgardner and seconded by Bordelon. Um, Councillor Overy can't be with us this evening, but she had requested that when we are receiving 
um, special contribution. She requested that the list be read, so I'll give a quick read through of uh, the donors. And we thank all of you, Raymond Smith, Elizabeth Hogan, Joseph Arcaris, um, an anonymous donor, Fairview, Kathleen Minor, Old Mystic Fire District, Lee Vincent, Joseph Wallace, and Captain Fred and Gail Yao. Thank you very much. Any discussion on the minutes? And we are voting on the accuracy of the minutes, not on the format of the minutes at this point. So if there is any discussion on the accuracy of the minutes, now would be the time. Councilor Parker. Um, if we could just um, spell Melinda Cassier's name correctly. Could you give us the page number, please? It is actually page five in our pa pamphlet and page two. I believe she's an RTM member? Correct. <coughs> Thank you. Any other corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing none, we will vote on the consent calendar. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. We are at seven councilors. Communications and reports. Town councilors. Councilor Bumgarner. Yes. Um, I understand that, um, again, Mr. Coastal Public Access has been a, um, you know, an item we've discussed quite a bit over the last few weeks. Um, but I, I would um, like to read uh, just a couple points that were provided to me by uh, Mr. Fitzgerald um, that I do believe he spoke to, but would just again like to reinforce. Um, he asked that I shared this letter um, to avoid kind of repeating some of the points that he previously made. I won't read all the points, but um, he did ask that I read over this highlighted section. Um, remember, well, first and foremost, thank you very much for allowing me to input my comments on the Mystic Coastal Access Master Plan presentation at the 2-11-2020 uh, Town Council meeting. Um, remember currently the Mystic Coastal Access is 80% inaccessible as made and designed by the 1990 and 1991 plans because of nine missing signs, two misplaced signs, and three no trespassing signs. I also disagree 40, 40 to 50% with the new master plan presented 2-11-2020 to the Town Council. The main points of disagreement are, one, the East Main Street and Water Street are included and not anywhere near water. They are major commercial roads in, in Mystic. Two, approximately 60% of the report is fancy signage and in future, when they go missing, will be totally expensive and if not impossible to replace. This signage is not state standard familiar to everyone. State standard should be used. If this plan as presented is accepted as is, it will result in eliminating the 60% of the 1990 to 1991 Mystic Coastal access uh, will be gone forever by law for the citizens in Groton. So he submitted um, you know, this, this letter into the record um, so that we could all review this in the future, but um, I've also talked to several other neighbors from, from um, you know, that um, throughout Mystic, um, you know, and, and they've stressed that, you know, despite the fact that they can see the water every day and, and um, not everyone enjoys it. And um, so, so many of them believe that it really should be the right of every citizen, whether they're town residents or people visiting, should have the right to full and unfettered access to, to the coastline. And you know, somebody who doesn't have water view from, you know, views myself, um, you know, I, I certainly love to, to go down there and, and you know, with my, my other half and, you know, enjoying ice cream in the summer, and I, I think everyone should be afforded that right. And, you know, I think long-term, while we're talking about signage, I think it's also important that, you know, folks have the opportunity, whether, you know, they're able or, you know, or, or even disabled people have the opportunity to get up close. And so I think um, even though we, we have the, you know, the, on, you know, on our agenda tonight, the approval of the design standards, for the master plan, I, I think we need to have a long-term discussion about that. So I, um, we'll get into that, you know, later on in the meeting. But I, I just want to thank the um, so many residents who have reached out to me in the last uh, week or so, just about um, you know who have, who have expressed the importance of coastal access and preserving it. Thank you, Councilor Parker. Um, I attended uh, the TVCCA board retreat. Um, we're discussing our vision plans for the next upcoming couple years and very well attended, a lot accomplished at that meeting, and besides that, receiving communications from the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Franco? 
I attended the Economic Development Strategy Public Meeting, which was held last week on Thursday at the Public Library. Um, it's very informative. And we had a beautification meeting. And also I received letters from residents, um, as some of the counselors did as well, um, regarding North Stonington Bridge. And I also had gone out, um, I believe it was two weekends ago, and I met with the neighbor of the bridge and I'm gonna butcher his last name, so I'm just gonna call him Marcel. Um, he lives right next door to the bridge and um, had a nice visit with him and learned about what has gone on down there and the concerns that they're having. And um, I think that's about it. Uh, Councilor Bordelon has left us. Councilor Melendez. No report. No report. Um, I also wanted to just note that the Economic Development Strategic Plan, if you could not make those presentations, there were four given in one day, um, they are, the plan is posted online on the Economic Development website, and um, go ahead. They're going to do that same presentation here on the 24th so that they Great. can get it on videotape. Excellent. Um, and Broughton Parks and Rec had a foundation fundraiser, and Read Across America by the schools was a big success. So. Very good. Clerk of the Representative Town Meeting. The will be meeting next week, and they have a couple of things on there um, that they're working on. I'm not sure if they're going to report on them, because they may be in works, but they will be meeting unless it's been called off. Clerk of the Council. Council, um, I have a, a, a vacancy in my office that has been posted, which I'm hoping to fill, because it's been very desperate, um, uh, without a full staff forever, feels like. Um, but I wanted to bring you up to speed on a couple of legislative items that, that are going to impact um, uh, my department directly. Um, and that um, one would be um, um, vital records being um, the search fees, having a search fee. This is a Department of Health, someone, and we're not sure who yet. And we, as the legislative committee for the Clerks Association, not sure who has uh, put their their marks on, on this particular um, statute, which is uh, statute 7-74. Um, they're repealing the fees that the town clerks um, receive for certified copies, which is just unbelievable. I'm sure it's a mistake. I hope it's a mistake. Uh, the intent on the uh, amendment was to um, relieve the Department of uh, Public Health, the registrar there, of the search, when they search for a record, it's time away from their desk and so forth, and their staff is, is as small as mine. Uh, and uh, so they would like to, res to be able to keep any fee that is, is, is given to them for searching. In other words, if you wanted a, a vital record, it's a $30 fee, and if they don't have the record, they want to keep the fee. So that was what the intent was, but it's, it's really been muddled. So we're watching that with intent and uh, legislature, they're aware of everything, um, uh, our, our own reps. Um, so uh, I, I just want to keep you up on all of that. If you want me to include you on all these emails, I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd be happy to, so you see what's going on. So if any. Looks if, like they wish to, yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, because it's, it's, it's intense. Very good. Um, Councilor Bordelon was out when it was her turn, so do you have communications? Um, I do not, but I appreciate you um, respectfully coming back to me. I did have a question for the town clerk, if it's okay to ask Certainly. that. Certainly. Um, my question is, I was just checking on the dual language ballot status, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know if um, uh, what that's looking like. Oh, Thank we're, you. On, we're, on, uh, we're on board with uh, having, it'll be on the same side, you know, so it'll have, you, you saw the, the uh, yeah. samples, it'll be just like that, so you have English. And Spanish. Okay, and that will be ready for the primaries. Yep, they'll have prim Perfect. every everything that we do. So if we have a referendum, if we have a primary, a general election, they'll all be that way. Thank you for your efforts. You're welcome. Councilor Baumgartner also has a question. Oh. Yeah, it was, my question was about whether or not it would be ready for the prime presidential primary. So thank uh, thank you so much to Those your. Those ballots, by the way, will be done. ready. It's 21 days before a primary, mm -hmm. not the 31 days what we're used to. So that's three weeks before. So it's the 7th of April. Those will be released. Oh, wow. right. Mr. Burt, the town manager's report. No report tonight. Thank you. I don't believe we have any department heads or the superintendent here this evening. Uh, so we're on to committee reports. 
Everybody knows what we do because everything's on TV. Temporary rules. Um, Chairman Obrey is not here, but we have two of the members. Do either of the members of the Temporary Rules Committee wish to ad address anything? Councilor Parker or Baumgartner? We're just continuing going over the rules and it, as previously stated, if you have any concerns, please email the group so that we can review it. Thank you very much. I have a question for Personnel, rules. I'm sorry? I have a question for rules. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, um, when we would expect the next update, do you feel like any changes coming or how is uh, the work coming? Um, when will there be any more updates or revisions? We're continually working. We're going by line by line item. Okay. So, and we're ex waiting for the rest of the counselors to give us information on what concerns you guys all have. Mm -hmm. So we've only received basically two or three and there's nine of us. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you didn't um, receive any, doesn't mean maybe a person doesn't have a concern. I don't know. I, but, uh, oh, yeah. All right, I was just curious to see what the timeline is for um, what that was. Thank you. Chairman Melendez on personnel and appointments. No. And rules, Chairman Heat is not with us. So we are on to new business. This is um, 2020 46 one part time seasonal pay plan, page 18. I believe we are on Councillor Parker, correct? Correct. Um, resolution requesting the approval to adopt a seasonal slash part-time pay plan, whereas in May of 2019, the governor signed into legislation Act 19-4, increasing the minimum fair wage into law, and whereas employers, excuse me, employers are required to increase the minimum wage as follows, from $10.10 to $11 on October 1st, 2019, $12 on September 1st, uh, 2020, 13 on August 1st, 2021, 14 on July 1st, 2022, 15 on June 1st, 2023, and whereas in years 2020 through 2023 will realize an impact by virtue of the aforementioned increases to avoid compression, and whereas departments will necessitate, necessitate budgets be adjust to fund said increases now therefore be it resolved that the town council approves the seasonal slash part-time employee wage increase according to the wage determination as prescribed by legislation act 19-4 and the pay plans presented at the committee of the whole meeting on february 25th 2020 i so move second moved by parker and seconded by Baumgartner. um Mr. Burke, did you want to add anything to this or? No. Okay. Any discussion? We've had discussion on all these items in Committee of the Whole. Seeing no further discussion, we will vote on 2020 46 part time seasonal pay plan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. Thank you. Item 20 20 64 1 review golf course or golf rules and regulations. On page 19, Councilor Franco. Make a resolution setting the 2020 rules and regulations for the Shanacosta Golf Course, whereas the Golf Advisory Board and the Parks and Recreational Recreation Commission have endorsed changes to the rules and regulations for the Shanacosta Golf Course for 2020, and whereas recommendations included addition to associate and associate plus memberships. Removing requirements for players having to use their own bag, removing payment plan option, Dropping exclusion of t-shirt and tank tops in addition to such documentation must specify an inability to play golf for a specific period of time, but need not be de may not have detailed medical information. To the regulation, the golfer must submit a letter to the letter of request with the reason for the request, including any appropriate supporting documents, i.e. doctor note. Now therefore be it resolved that the town council approves the revised municipal golf course rules and regulations for 2020 as attached to this resolution. I so move. Second. Moved by Franco and seconded by Bordelon. And I would thank the manager for looking into Councilor Franco's concern regarding the medical note. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 2020-64 review of golf rules and regulations, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. And 
I've had a request to go to Councilor Melendez for 2020 68 Thames Street repairs, please. I make a uh, motion, a resolution for fiscal year ending 2020 general contingency transfer to City of Groton, whereas the town charter provides for general contingency transfers during the year, and whereas a portion of Thames Street in the City of Groton was damaged during heavy rains and flash flooding in July 2019, with the total repair cost estimated at $316,000. $481.50, and whereas the City of Groton is proposing to fund this project with unexpended fiscal year 2019 highway funds of $193,512 and funding from General Dynamics Electric Boat of $53,000, and whereas the City of Groton is requesting reimbursement from the Town of Groton for the balance of $69,969.50, now, therefore, be it resolved that $69,969.50 is transferred from the general fund contingency function number 1074 to the City of Groton Highway Maintenance Account 10901-5230 for partial reimbursement of the reconstruction of a portion of Thames Street located in the City of Groton. Refer to the RTM. I so move. Second. Moved by Melendez and seconded by Parker. Is there any question or discussion on this item? Councilor Bordelon. Um, I just want to just, I know uh, uh, the, uh, town manager um, already had stated what would happen with the funds and because I've had people ask me if you could just restate if the funds, um, if, it come, if it comes in under budget, that amount that we sent, sent to the city, what happens with those remaining funds? First of all, if, if they're asking for reimbursement, then they would just submit for less reimbursement. But if for some reason we didn't pay it, yep. then I would. Then their intent ongoing is, as indicated by Mayor Hedrick, is to offset any request to us for future yearly highway funding. So one way or another, it would come back to us. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Bumgarn. Um, a question for the manager. Um, what is the balance of um, the contingency fund? Uh, after uh, these funds will be transferred? I don't have that with me, but it's significant. It's still plenty of money in there for fourth quarter. Cindy's taking a look at it for fourth quarter, trans potential fourth quarter transfers and other things upcoming to make sure that there's not going to be an issue. Okay. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further discussion, we'll vote on 2020 68 Thames Street repairs. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. We are on to 2020-71-1 contract extension for, for professional auditing services, 2020-2021 on page 27. And we are at Councilor Zapari, please. Resolution authorizing a contract extension for professional uh, auditing services, whereas Connecticut state statutes and the town of Groton Charter require the town council to appoint a town auditor or auditors. And whereas in 2016, the town of Groton appointed the firm of Blum Shapiro and Company PC for a term of three years, physical year 2017, physical year 2018, and physical year ending 2019 with an option for a two-year extension. And whereas the staff is satisfied with the work performed by Blum Shapiro and feels their knowledge of the town of Groton and its financial practices is desirable, and whereas the firm of Blum Shapiro has shown a high level of experience in municipal auditing and has served well as town auditors since originally hired in 2005. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager, John Burt, may execute a two-year extension for the current contract for audit services with Bloom Shapiro and Company, PC. I so move. Second. second. Moved by Zapari and seconded by Bordelon. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of 2020-71 contract extension for professional auditing services, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstentions. Six in favor, one opposed, Bordelon, zero abstentions. That motion passes. We are on to 2020 73-1 recommendation of 2020 golf rates on page 28 and uh, Councilor Bumgarden, we're back to you. All right. Resolution setting 2020 rates for the Shenacosta golf course. Whereas the Parks and Recreation Commission has have endorsed changes to the daily fees for the Shenacosta golf course for 2020 and whereas recommendations include an increase of rates for all daily fees with the exception of winter youth tournament and golf court uh, golf cart rates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council approves the revised municipal golf course uh, rates for 2020, dated February 25th, 2020, so moved. Second. Moved by Baumgartner and seconded by Franco. Any discussion on the rates? We again discussed this in Committee of the Whole. Councilor Bordelon? Um, I understand they gave it a you know, full, I appreciate their stance and discussion from Parks and Rec on why they did not increase the winter rates, but it's my belief that we are one of the only golf courses in the area that offer winter play. Therefore, I feel with the rising cost to maintain the golf course, which is an asset to the town, we need to have revenues coming in to maintain that. Therefore, as it being desirable and looking at the cost of most of the items that went up on this list only by two bucks, it makes sense to me that the $33 winter rate should also reflect a raise of $2 as well. Uh, once again, I probably won't have that support, but that is my belief. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, we will vote on 2020-73, recommendation of 2020 golf rates. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes. Six in favor, one opposed, Bordelon, and zero abstentions. We are on to 2020 77 1 Mystic Coastal Access Plan. This is on page 30. Councilor Parker. Resolution to accept the Mystic Coastal Access Plan, whereas Groton has been proactive in acquiring coastal access along its entire coastline as waterfront properties are developed into non-water dependent projects along the Mystic River, and whereas it has been a goal to connect these access points to create a coastal trail, and whereas signage designed in 1990 was installed at a number of access points, but there is limited indication of how the points are connected for the public to clearly see, and whereas the need for improved local signage and connecting this signage, specifically, specifically in Mystic as part of its branding effort, has been identified, and whereas a coastal access plan was identified as the first step to having a well-designed and comprehensive approach to coastal access trail, and whereas Kent and Frost and representatives from the community met and designed a plan identifying a network of coastal access points and a wayfinding system to direct users along the waterfront and its connections to the downtown shopping area and recommendations for our future public access connections in Mystic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council accept the design and style of the Mystic Coastal Action Plan as presented to the Town Council on February 11, 2020. I so move. Second. Moved by Parker and seconded by Zafari. Any questions or comments? Again, we discussed this at length in Committee of the Whole, Councilor Franco and then Baumgart. Uh, I was not present at that meeting. So, um, so when it's stating here that we're accepting the design and style, does that include what's actually the graphics that are on the sign? Do you want to take it, Mr. Burr? Do you want me to go? Yes, but I do want to point out that I do agree with Mr. Dunn that, and I, I think I sent an email to everyone that from John Reiner saying we are going to have to look at sizes as you go along. So, but as for styles, yes. However, I would point out that I don't have anything in our CIPs for funding this this year. So, um, we have a while if we want to make any changes. When I mean the graphics, I'm saying there was a map on there that actually showed locations. Are we oh, approving right. that no, location we're not approving that on the no, graphic? No, just the general look of any signage. All right. And, and when blue trail or that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And when we approve this, does this also cover, um, I guess it's um, painting of the pylons as well down the boardwalks, blue? It allows that in there. And, that's, and, that was, and this is a vote to say that that's okay? At least as an initial plan, I th you know, I think what John's looking at is maybe a pilot at some point to get, do a little section, just kind of see how it looks, 
but yeah, so it does improve the look. I personally have had people, mm -hmm. numerous people contact me that they don't want the pylons painted at all. Mm -hmm. It takes from away I've from the natural, too. <laughs> a natural beauty of the area mm -hmm. and the quaint New Englandy feel of it, mm -hmm. and I agree with them because I just don't think those pylons should be blue. So if that is part of this, is that I don't want to approve it with the blue pylons. So I don't know how to <laughs> as, as of right now, but I, I've had also received some similar comments, and uh, I agree too. So I, I too have had those same comments and it's actually going to be plastic wrapping around them and that was a concern that some people had that they really didn't want the plastic wrapped around. Um, the way I understood this was we're looking at the overall concept, um, the style of it, and then things are going to be adjusted as right. per Mr. Burt's emails um, with the size and everything. Um, this was just to kind of accept what Kent and Frost had done. But we wanted to be clear that the public understood we weren't approving a map at this point because we don't have the legal opinions yet. So that's why I chose to say design and style, just as a, um, a way of accepting the designs from Kent and Frost. Nothing specific has been done. I would assume that when something comes into the CIP, that's where the specifics would be. And at right. that point, we, can make we could say at that point. no to the pylon wrapping. Right. Um, I have Councilor Bumgardner and then Parker. Yes, um, so uh, to um, Councillor Franco's point, um, in some of my discussions I've had with, with other residents, they uh, express their, I um, shouldn't say disbelief, but you know, trying to find the right word, uh, just uh, discomfort with the blue um, you know, painted lines. Um, but nonetheless, I, I do think it's important to, for um, the you know, coastal access trail to have um, wayfinding that is far superior to what it, it is existing, uh, and at the very least, prior to um, any kind of CIP to approve um, new signage, we, we ought to replace those missing signs. Um, okay. Can I speak? Yeah. Uh, all signage we have legal access to replace have been replaced. I cannot legally do anything that's not currently up. Uh, staff cannot be directed to do that. Council can't take that action, so just you're aware until the attorney comes up with something else. Thank you. So uh, f just a follow-up question then to mm -hmm. the manager. If the town at any point has placed signs at certain locations and they were tampered with, is it legally okay for anybody, whether they're knowingly removing those signs because they feel like those signs mm -hmm. are not in compliance with um, you know, local zoning or their, you know, um, uh, you know, lo local zoning approvals. Mm -hmm. um, is it appropriate that they do so without any kind of consultation with the town? Because as far as well, I know, the town was never aware of mm -hmm. signs um, after being removed. They were never informed of uh, that removal. And so to the public, it's interpreted as mm -hmm. vandalism. Right. And oh, it's certainly, you know, I think anytime you remove a sign like that, that it should be considered vandalism. I had talked expressly with the uh, attorney, you know, let's say there had been uh, signs up at, at the powerhouse years ago and maybe there's a verbal agreement. That does not play into the legality. If you don't have the easement or an agreement in place, it doesn't change anything. So, and I have, by the way, directed the attorney to reach out to DEEP, but unless there's actually an easement or an agreement, it's not expected to, to bear any fruit. But I said, let's, let's just cross that, you know, make that check on there. And I would just say that um, the recent example of what happened on Park Place, where we, no we put up a so sign, <laughs> we put up a sign and someone tore it down, and um, we went back and we replaced it because we knew we were legally able to. Can I just mention, by the way, the police actually did knock on doors and ask if anybody saw anything. That might also have to do with something with it still being there. Oh, that's in the new that's true. That's true. <laughs> Councilor Parker. Um, question: Do we? Since this is not in the CIP, do we need to approve the design and plan if we're not, is not in this current year's or upcoming year's budget? You know, Does this delay it? Honestly, without me, I, unless you guys um, take it action to reverse my recommendation on not funding it this year, which you could, it'd be up to you, then there is not a need to 
have to do it at this point. I'm, I'm sorry, did you say we were funding it or we're not? We are not. So unless you reverse that over my rec, I recommended zero this year until all things are sorted out. Okay. But, but this would not delay it. It would not hurt it because we're still waiting on attorney opinion. Right. Okay. And again, I, you know, I feel a pilot probably is a better step first eventually just to make sure before you spend that kind of money, make sure we get exactly what we want. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. I was also thinking along the lines of Councilor Parker. It um, seems ha see, since there is still time that we're investigating some of the other attorneys' opinions, does it even make sense to move this forward at this time, considering we're unsure of the size, the, the wrapping of the thing, the line down the road? There's so many things that are kind of still kind of gray. Um, also, my to my point at the last meeting, I had asked. Um, I understand that you said the attorney was not going to reach out to the state based on those other things, but have we done any ch um, reaching out to clarify as of right now on the areas that we decided were not currently public access? Because if those truly aren't, we should have those off of the state website at least. The two? Um, because as of right now, right. my understanding is if you go online, and I was coming to visit Mystic, mm -hmm. and I click on there and look at public access, well, it says I can go down that area. I think we want to, we had said at the last meeting, let's wait till we get that last opinion before contacting the state. That's how I was directed last week. Um, so as of now, we're waiting. So I just want to make sure as, as it stands, the one part of the powerhouse that we stated that the attorney right. had stated that right. we do not have current access, correct? Correct. Okay. So that is still on the site saying that people mm -hmm. do have public access is my understanding. I'll ask Deb to reach out All to right. him. And I know the physical map from the 90s just says proposed access on it, but I don't know what the actual state. Right. I just feel like we should it. know because if that is truly the opinion of the attorney that that you're using to go by, then we should just make sure the state reflects that. So oh, I did direct them to talk to Deep, so that should only. Well, I do know Eric's out of country this week, so I'm not anticipating anything this week. But does it? If it doesn't. It's gone this long. If you don't mind, I'll wait one or two weeks just to have them check that out. The and the, is, is and that the other okay? thing is, is there any really rush or timeline? I mean, I'm all for coastal access, but is there any real rush? I mean, like to make sure we do our due diligence and really look into all the leads possible, you know, um, just to make sure we're not missing something. We're, we're not. Uh, this has been thoroughly researched. Mm -hmm. um, I do not anticipate anything. Again, there could be other anecdotal information out there that does not bear on, if, unless you have you know, easements or agreements or that type of thing. That's, you know, um, you know, firm actions. Um, that's what matters. But we do have Marco Fingers files. We do have all the planning files. That's all been looked at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something new comes up, but we've done exhaustive research. You know, mm -hmm. the staff has, as well as the attorney, the title searchers, surveyors. <laughs> so. And then the other question I have is, um, I think Councillor Franco had brought it up after she had went down there and other people have brought it up. You know, with the boats, if that truly is in that one section, coastal access through up to a certain point that we've confirmed, but we're not sure how far that goes as of right now, that's still up for negotiation of figuring out um, what will that look like as far as what we would need to do. I think we need to see how that turns out first. Mm -hmm. If so we don't have, if we cannot prove that that's a road and we have legal access, then it stays as it is. But we'll just have to see how that comes out. And then one at that meeting, I also had asked that maybe a second sign be placed where um, once this is determined, if it truly does not extend all the way down on, uh, not the powerhouse, sorry, the other section that you guys are still looking into. Fort Rachel. Fort Rachel, sorry, thank you. Um, if there truly is not the full access all the way down that's still kind of gray, that we at least have a stopping point of a sign that states that that ends there. Sure. So it's there's clearly marked. I'd like to have something that says public welcome to use the gazebo too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Franco. So, Mr. Burr, I was, um, after just hearing what Councilor Bordelin said, I do not think we should contact the state right away and have it removed until we have an absolute right. definitive answer as to where we stand on this. Because to take it off the website and then try and get it back on, if we mm -hmm. find that there is some kind of issue that it should be back on there. So I don't think, that should be touched until there is an absolute definitive answer. At least that's my... Which we will on Powerhouse in the next week or two. Yeah, so, yeah. Which I think we have a definitive answer now, but we'll check off that last box. Right. Um. Councilor Sapari? It's my understanding that we have an easement on the parts of the trail that are open now 
that, are, that we're claiming are open now. And that easement was obtained by consent of the then owners. And when they transferred the property, if they transferred the property, the easement went with the, tra the transfer. Right. Mm -hmm. So no one was forced into giving up the right that they have given up. Uh, I think that this is a, a beautiful concept of opening the space so that the public can enjoy it. I think this will do a lot for attracting tourists to the Groton Mystic area because people will talk about that experience. It's not a common experience uh, up and down the East Coast. Hopefully it becomes more common. But Mystic is a, is a very quaint town and to open it up that way would be advantageous to the people who are doing business in downtown Mystic. Uh, it also, it, it, it's, it's more, um, I'd like to say democratic, not, not hooting the party, but hooting the concept of democracy, that it is something for all of the people, that everybody has an access to it. And I think we should support this right up to the, to the hill. Uh, I think we should should bring this home, and I think we should approve this motion, and then as soon as we can carry forward with the execution of properly marking that those areas. Some people have acted to uh, try to block the use of the easement, which they don't have a legal right to do, and uh, I, I think that we should make it clear that the public has access to those specific zones of property where the easement has been granted by the owners. They are not, none of the places we have easements to are blocked. They're I, I thought there were no trespassing signs. Only, up, only the access on, on, signs have been taken only down. On, only on the uh, powerhouse, which we do not have access to. They did not grant an easement. OK. Yeah. Well, I still think it's a good idea to promote this, and the signs will promote it. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, I think I, 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 it hasn't changed my opinion at all. I think we should support this as much as we can. Uh, and to add, we are, our engineering is pricing out a potential walkway along Powerhouse because we would like access. <laughs> and just to make it clear, staff really wants access to the right. river, you know? So I just want to make that very clear. You know, we are bound by the law, though. Uh, and, and just to reiterate and bring it back to what we're actually voting on tonight, we are not voting on placing any signs. We're not voting on any trail at this point because we don't have the legal opinions yet. We're just voting on the overall concept that was presented by Kenton Frost. And I think the biggest concern of planning is they just need to, you know, we can't leave the consultant out there hanging. They need to say, okay, you're done with this. Right. You know, so I think that's the main thing is whatever happens here tonight, we're going to wrap that up and that's the plan as of right now, whether it's adopted or not. If we want amendments later, we have to pay to amend it. Um, Councilor Bumgarner, did you want to speak again? Yeah, so um, actually to, before um, I forget the last point you made, if we want to make amendments to uh, or, or changes to the master plan, uh, we would have the town ha would have to pay um, for those services in the future. Right, because you only pay for this much of consulting service. It's a consultant. You can't leave it out, you know, just make changes forever. You have to wrap it up. So any potential feedback that the town attorneys would be giving on the master plan, or I'm sorry, I, mean, on I would, the I would wait until we get that second opinion. I'd wait for that. I should make that clear. So uh, before kind of um, uh, make my second half pitch, um, I would like to acknowledge the mayor for um, you know seeking to amend the language on from in the previous meeting. Um, with respect to approving the um, the uh, mystical public access master plan uh, uh, in its entirety, originally um, the the way the motion was uh, drafted was that we were going to actually approve um, the um, uh, mystical public access plan, um, which would have also reflected um, some of the unknown um, issues that we um, you know um, were, we were having with. Uh, um, again, the powerhouse condos and the um, for Rachel Marina as to whether or not those co coastal access points were, um, you know, uh, legal uh, areas for for coastal access for the public. Um, nonetheless, I do think we are 
um, putting the cart before the horse without having all of our questions answered from the town attorney. Um, and to kind of push this prematurely before getting those answers, I think would um, create a great disservice to actually um, having uh, unfettered access um, through, um, from and for the end of Fort Rachel Marina all the way down to um, uh, the uh, the bridge. Um, so, you know, I would make a, a you know an appeal to the entire council to, uh, irrespective of what the town attorney states, that we should look to um, codify, you know to identify uh, easements or right of ways that um, even may not. We, we don't have legal access to that. We ensure that there is that con continuous access um, because I, I don't think we should wait for a dock to be built that we the town and uh, residents and, and um, you know tourists have been waiting decades to be built um, since uh, the count powerhouse condos were um, you know were, were built for housing. So um, I can't support this um, t tonight out of um, out of the council meeting. Um, but I, I do hope that in the future we can improve a, a, um, a master plan that is reflective of, again, a full and unfettered coastal access um, as outlined in previous uh, state plans. So I'm, I'm just gonna state again for the public, um, what we are voting tonight has nothing to do with the legal access to various points along the Mystic River. We are still waiting on our town attorneys due diligence. What we are voting tonight is simply a design style that Kent and Frost brought to us, which depending on any future CIPs will vary depending on what we want to do. So we may decide to do the blue stripe. We may not decide to do the wrappings on the pylons. We may not decide to do the five foot flags. We may decide to do something smaller. But the overall theme of Kent and Frost is what we're voting tonight. This has, again, nothing to do with the legal aspects of where the town can place public access signs. So I, I just feel like I need to state that again, just so that the public is aware of what we're doing tonight. And we are not voting on something without having the town attorney's opinion. This is purely an aesthetic item that we're voting this evening. Councilor Franco. So if we vote on this, and let me just, I just want to ask a, I guess, a parliamentary question. If this fails, when does it, when would it be able to come back to us? I think a year. So that we wouldn't be able to do anything for right. a year if this fails. And if the manager wishes to do a pilot program, then we have a problem because we can't bring this back. So um, I. Another I option, you know, just to throw out there is amending the resolution to take out like the pylons and some of that and yeah, maybe pare it down a bit or to approve it, you know, approve the plan with Pendy and then with staff to not move forward with anything until funding's in place and direction on I, I layout think, and style, you know, to I be think approved. it's been pretty clearly <laughs> stated from this council that there are um, certain aspects within the program that um, we are not in favor of that does not prevent the planning department from coming back with amended designs based on what Ken and Frost have generated though. I, I hate to have us get bogged down and not get this taken care of and have it ready to go for when the town is ready and when the lawyer's opinions do come in. I would love for us to be able to jump right in and get it signed properly and, and, and appropriately. Um, as Councilor Baumgartner said, the current signs aren't very uh, welcoming and it's hard to see from one point to the other so I would like to be ready to go once we do get the lawyer's opinion so that's why I um, I hope everyone can support this councilors of Perry I move to table uh, this issue to the next council meeting uh, in, in April that'll give our uh, that'll give our, our, our council a, temp, a chance to complete their work and satisfy the issues that some of the councilors have brought up. Is there a second? Second. Are you, uh, Madam Clerk, are you taking the motions? Is table Hold on one second, please. Table uh, the right word. Motion to table by Zaperi, seconded by. We want to postpone, not table. Second. So, so I rescind. Okay. okay. Hold on, hold on, please. Wait. 
So Councilor Zapari made the initial motion and you had orig it originally stated to table. I didn't even catch who the second was. So do you wish to change your? Yes, let's, let's postpone until the April uh, town council meeting. Second. April council, town council meeting. So April, what is the date on that, Madam, Madam Clerk? I can look. Seven. April 7th. <clears throat> April 7th. Yep. So the motion is to postpone 2020-77 Mystic Coastal Astic, uh, Access Plan until the April 7th meeting moved by Zaperi. Seconded by Franco. Seconded by Franco. Is this debatable, Madam Clerk? Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Councilor Bordelon. Um, I think that's a fair request from Councillor um, Zapiri. Um, I think it addresses a lot of the issues, even though this signage is not about the access point, it's about the plan. But since there is some discrepancy about size, wrapping, maybe we can address that in, you know, via email or more discussion with the people before that time. That way we can amend, as the manager had stated, to maybe take some of the pieces out and have a really well-drafted plan. Councilor Melendez. Uh, just a question for the manager. You said that you wanted this done because you wanted to close the account with the consultant. I, I don't see a multi being an issue. Okay. Councilor Baumgartner. And um, perhaps we can solicit uh, greater public um, uh, involvement by virtue of having a, uh, a public here or a public forum on, on the master plan in, in uh, in the coming, you know, potentially in a month or so, um, similar to what we've done with other items in the past, where we, or or um, development projects in town, where you know there's been a, an unveiling of, of that project where the public can come in and, and hear it, um, and obviously they can do so in a you know a town council meeting. But I think um, the, the public would be very interested in having this. Mr. So. Burt, is the um designs that were presented at our meeting are they available online for the public to view I would have to I would assume so but well it's, it is as part of our agenda packs but right I don't know if it's right off the main page but I can double check that that would be helpful and then that would give the, uh, the public a chance to contact um, their favorite counselors to give their opinion on what they feel is um, appropriate or not appropriate. Although some people have already, as we said, some people have already reached out and said, we like that, we don't like that. Um, I just, again, I really hate to see this um, not go through. Are there any counselors who haven't spoken yet that wish to speak? Councilor Bordelon. Um, yes, I, I agree with Councilor uh, Baumgartner. Under, the, under our agenda tonight, it has public hearing. Would it be appropriate to have that under the meeting um, that we're going to discuss to have a public hearing so that um, the constituents and the community can come forward with their concerns about the design and the wrapping and have that just under a public hearing uh, line just to have them involved in this. I think it would be more appropriate to have more of like a forum like we did with some of the other things rather than public hearings are normally for formal legislation, are they not? It doesn't have right. to Typically, be but there's nothing against it. Madam Clerk? Normally, your public hearings are, are you know, by, by uh, statute or by the charter, but like uh, the town manager suggested, there's nothing wrong with holding a public forum. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when you, when you do a public hearing, it has to be noted in the newspaper, which no one ever reads. <laughs> a public forum we can, we can have uh, in meeting notices in the newspaper. People do read those. So, and just a reminder, we're going into the budget season, so I don't know if we want a separate night for it. I'd rather make it part of the council meeting. That's true. But, but, oh, sorry. So, so then, if mm -hmm. if we wanted a public hearing, it would need to be attached to legislation, or so it would have to be attached to a piece of legislation. It would have to be public noticed, uh, including the newspaper, um, and all of that. So, um, Councilor Franco. Um, just a suggestion, I, we've had meetings with the public where we've invited them to come speak to counselors regarding a topic or subject, maybe coffee with the counselors, and there may be something that a couple counselors might like to put on in the community and put out flyers and, and 
invite people to get feedback from them and maybe bring it back to the council and share it with the rest of us. We have one coming up. I can't remember the date, though. Council Melinda, do you remember what date it is? Uh, is it? It's next month, but we haven't set a date yet. The, in March. It's, it will be in March, It's right? March. Okay. Yeah, okay. we haven't set a date yet. Well, it is March. Yeah. yeah. And I believe, actually, Councilor Bumgardner is um, on that date as well. We also so maybe you can make um, a flyer that actually s you're welcoming people to come discuss this with you and then bring the packet with all the and then try and explain it to the public the best you can and see what they have to say and maybe bring it back. Stay tuned. All righty. <laughs> Sounds good. I just ask that it stay to the design standards. We don't want to get into, you know, the laws of the law. So we're bound by what we currently have for the plan. Right. So we have a motion on the floor to postpone this item till the April 7th town council meeting. So that's what we're discussing right now is whether we wish to postpone it. That's what the discussion should be at this point. I just wanted to speak, speak to the public hearing. I think if we have a, a meeting that that can be one sided of depending on who's hosting the meeting and for counselors versus having full transparency and making it a public comment. So like uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, who spoke tonight, can have his full due diligent time to speak openly about his you know, design, possibly Larry had concerns about the sizing. I think a public, um, under an actual agenda item, like you said, not having another night where we have this big forum, allows it to be part of public record and allows people to come out and speak. That's just my thought. Having so, a little coffee with the counselors and a little bit, I, I think that's kind of a bias, but that's my opinion. But I do respect whatever you guys say. So the discussion right now should be on whether we choose to postpone this till April 7th, not on the merits okay. of the plan or whether what you want to do with it next. So we should be discussing whether we are going to move this to April 7th. That's what we are on now. So Council Parker does not wish to speak. Is there any more discussion about whether we should postpone or not? I am opposed to postponing. I will just state that up front. Okay, anyone else? All right, so right now we are voting to postpone item 202077 until the April 7th meeting. All those in favor of postponement, please raise your hand and hold your hand till I get your name. So Bumgardner, Parker, Franco, Bordelon, Excuse me? I said everyone. But. Melendez, Zapari, opposed, Granitoski. And there are no abstentions. So one, two, three, four, five, six in favor of postponing, one opposed, Granitoski, zero abstentions. So that motion is postponed until the April 7th meeting. We are on to item. 2021081 Shellfish Management Plan on page 31. And this is um, before moving I forward. It's Excuse me, one minute, please. I have the floor. We are on shellfish management plan on page 31. Councilor Franco. I, I had a comment before we moved on to the next item, please. With all due respect. Yes. Um, what's the decision now that it's been postponed? I think we do need to talk about how we're going to have the public. It's postponed until April 7th, so we will be discussing at that time. So we won't have a discussion before that is what I was asking. There will be no public comment or no. You said there was a meeting with counselors in March, so we're not doing that either then? Point of order. I, I did not say I was just asking that there for, was a meeting in March. Point of order was called I am, by Bumgardner. No. Councilor Bumgardner. I believe that's something you can bring up during new business. Okay, perfect. I'll do it then. Thank you. Councilor Franco. I'll do it there. Thank you. All right. I make a motion. I'm going to make a resolution approving updated shellfish management plan. Whereas the Groton Town Council has the authority to approve shellfishing regulations pursuant to section 26-257A of the Connecticut General Statutes and the Town of Groton Ordinance number 139, section 2-216 through 2-131 of the Groton Town Code. And whereas the State of Connecticut Department of Agri Agriculture, Bureau of Agriculture, and the Town of Groton General Manager and the town council have reviewed an updated management plan in relation to the state of Connecticut's shellfish regulations and the interest of both recreational and commercial fish shell fishing, as well as the interest of the town of Groton. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council approves the updated shellfish management plan submitted and dated January 21st, 2020. I so move. Second. Thanks. Moved by Franco. It's heartily seconded by Borderline. 
Um, we have, thank you again, gentlemen from the Shellfish Commission who are here. You did a fine presentation for us at the Committee of the Whole. I'm seeing no discussion, we will vote on 2021-08 Shellfish Management Plan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, so moved unanimously at seven councillors. And we are on to 2021091 Town Attorney Appointment, Councilor Bordelon. I had respectfully requested due to my eyesight that you could please skip me. Thank you. My apologies. Yep. Councilor Melendez. Thank you. Resolution appointing the Town Attorney. Whereas the Town Council has considered the needs of the Town for legal advice, the nature of the litigation currently <coughs> underway, and the cost and quality of the legal services now being provided. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to Town Charter Section 8.2.1, Eileen Duggan of the firm of Swissman, Shapiro, Wool, Brennan, Gray, and Greenberg, PC, is hereby appointed Town Attorney to exercise all powers and duties of that office until her successor shall be appointed and qualified, and that the following attorneys from Swissman, Shapiro, may assist Attorney Duggan in carrying out her duties. Robert Avena, Raymond Barable, James Berryman, Michael Blanchard, Eric Callahan, Richard Cody, Jack Collins, Jeanette Dosty, Brian Fiango, Christy Kelly, Nicholas Keppel, Robert Kevill, Roger Scully, Kyle Zrenda. I so move. Second. second. Moved by Melendez and seconded by Parker. Attorney Duggan will be pleased that you said her name correctly. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you on her behalf. All right, all those in favor of 2021-09, town attorney appointment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Six in favor, one opposed, Bordelon. Zero abstentions, that motion passes. We are on to other business. The, well, I'm, because we had a conversation okay. about what can be- Do you want me to, do you want me to Yes. Say what Tom Hennick said? <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. I was asked by some of the council members to uh, run ideas by on how uh, basically agenda items might be set. And one of the ideas involves the uh, other business. And what Tom Hennick told me today, he's the main staff to the uh, FOIA commission. So whenever you bring up something on their other business, you have to vote to suspend the rules to bring that item up. It's just a spot to do that in. So um, if you want to bring that up, you'll ask to bring it up and then you, you basically you'll make a motion to suspend the rules to add that to the agenda item. People will vote because it's not, anything else has to be in advance on the agenda. So if, so, so I wanted that to be known um, because we had some questions about raising items here. Um, and so just to clarify, if anything, if anyone wants to raise anything under Roman numeral 11, they need to make a motion to suspend the rules to discuss a new item. Correct. And then the council has to vote in favor of suspending the rules. <clears throat> and then at that point, the floor can go back to that counselor to raise whatever issue right. it is. Councilor Franco. But as you said, if it was brought in advance and it was asked possibly of the mayor or yourself, if we could put an item under other business for discussion, just to see if we well, wanted to move the agenda forward. That goes out, right. Right. As long as it's on there, there's right. no suspension of rules, no. and then it's a discussion. Correct. Correct. But All right. Since there's nothing on here, right? Am I allowed to ask a question just to the town manager without it being a debate or anything? I think as long as it's not discussion. So you're allowed to bring something forward, but without discussion, and that's a yeah. right. So, so my understanding with respect to um, to uh, what what the town manager said is. For other business, in other words, if you wanted to bring a motion, a motion, you wanted to bring an item in to to um, put on the agenda, like let's say you wanted to say, oh, I'm going to have a new meeting, mm -hmm. that would be uh, something you can discuss, but you certainly can't put it in a motion to vote on without right. suspending the rules. That's that's what he well, means. you can't even discuss it without just suspending the rules. Tom's very clear. Right. That. We we had that clarified for us today. Mm -hmm. um, so then you can ask a question. I had just read a note asking if, um, because there hasn't been much snow plowing and sanding, how are we doing? Is there a lot of savings there? Well, if you remember, Gary retired. 
Mm -hmm. And there was quite a payout, so no. <laughs> okay. But we haven't had to tap Good into to contingency. Good <laughs> so. to know. Not banking on anything, though, yeah. coming forward. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. So I have two things. Um, first was the question. So if we wanted, because if you have an item here that says other business, it's kind of useless then, which is fine under the rules. Um, therefore, then, when, if we wanted something that's not going to have a motion, just to be discussed, when should we submit that so it can be under here in a, in a timely manner before the meeting? Well, you could do what you have done where you ask the mayor, she sends out an email and three people say, we want this on the agenda. Though typically I'd put something under regular business then. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really use it under. Other business is really just for stuff on the fly to be allow you a place right. to suspend the rules to bring it up. Right, and, and my, I guess my mm -hmm. question is, does it need three votes then if we ask in advance to have it put there? That's how you're current. Well, I mean, it, again, it would go under new. If okay. you're if you're bringing up in advance, Everybody's it'll go under new. We're talking over each other, so go ahead. Mm -hmm. If you bring it up in advance, it'll go under new items. It okay. won't go under. This is for if you want to bring it up on the fly, and because it's not an agenda, then you'll vote to suspend the rules. So anything else you bring up in advance will go under new business. So as the rules are written right now, and this is one of the first things that um, Councilor Melendez and I, when we attended the Rules Committee meeting, this was one of the first things we asked the Rules Committee to address was um, placing items on the agenda and they are looking into that. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we are living under the old rules. So if you want something in the regular agenda, then mm -hmm. you need to follow the process that we've been following. This item, as the manager have said, has said, and in consult consultation with our F Freedom of Information Act resource, is for counselors to ask to suspend the rules to raise an item that they wish to discuss tonight. Of course, you have to have consensus of the council if you want to suspend the rules. It can't be just a single person that wishes to suspend the rules. Okay. So Do my, you have a follow-up question? So my, my thing is I'd like to suspend the rules to discuss how we're going to go about um, having some type of public discussion, let that be a forum, or a public, um, um, public hearing night where people can come voice their concerns or support for the Missile Postal Access signage. Is there a second to suspend the rules? There is no second to suspend the rules. Second. I'll give it a second. First. Okay, so do that again. So Councilor Bordelon is moving to suspend the rules to discuss the publicity for Mystic Coastal Access, and that is seconded by Franco. Franco, is that who you got? Okay. All right, so then um, debatable, Madam Clerk? No. So then all those in favor of suspending the rules to discuss publicity for the Mystic Coastal Public Access Design, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So one, two, three, four opposed. That is Parker, Franco, Granitoski. Who was it down here? Enza Perry. So the in favors were Bumgardner, Bordelon, Enza Perry. Oh, Melendez. So that motion fails, three in favor, four opposed, zero abstentions. So there will be no public, we don't so know yet. So the rules are not suspended. So the okay. rules are not suspended. So how will that item be taken up then? I just Excuse want to clarify. I'm not talking about the item. I'm just asking for clarification. We did mention it under the other part. How do we move forward with this so there will be no discussion on it at all then? I just want a clarification. Okay. So at this point, yep. the motion to suspend the rules to discuss it failed. So there is no discussion at this point on that item. Can I just make a Mr. point about any item? Yes. The rule still exists, though, that you could request the mayor for a new item to be placed on, and then she would email that out to the council of three people say, yes, it would be under new business. Thank you. If there is any other other business, seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Moved by Parker. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Baumgartner. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. We're adjourned at 8.07.